Andrew, you've, you've signed a new contract keeping you at the club until 2026. How happy a moment is that for you? Yeah, it's a great moment for me. Um, I think it's, a, it's another step in stone in my development and I just can't wait to keep going. You must be very pleased with the length of the contract as well because it shows that the club have a lot of faith in you as a player. Yeah, definitely. Um, as you said, it just shows uh, the club has faith in me as a player. And uh, yeah, as I said, it's a, it's a delight. I'm delighted to sign this contract. Um, having joined the club at the age of 16 and progressed through the, the youth ranks into the first team, uh, it must be a club that's very close to your heart. Yeah, definitely. It was obviously, I moved from Ireland at 16, so Norwich is the only club I know. And yeah, it's, um, it's a club that since coming in at 16 on the 18s, 23s, and obviously transitioning into, into the first team, it's, it's always felt like a family club to me. And I think that's one of the main reasons why I signed here, because I just felt so comfortable um, from the first two trials I came in at 16. Uh, you mentioned your progression there through the, the under 18s, in, under 23s, and into the first team. And you're not the only person, a uh, player, to have, uh, have made that progression. What is it about the setup here at, at Norwich in terms of the coaching and the, and the chances you get in the first team that um, enables them to produce so many good young players? Um, as you said, I think it's um, the coaching as well. I think from 18 to 23, they kind of give you an insight into how the first team will train and what to, what, what's expected of you. Um, and I think that goes for outside of football as well. There's a couple of times in the 23s, I remember one game, we were playing Newcastle away, I think it was it was David Wright at the time was the manager. And we left the bus in a bit of a mess after and he, we were all in our, in our hotel rooms and stuff. He called us all down to come back in and, and tidy the bus. So it's just values like that outside of, the, outside of football as well that kind of just makes you mature as, as, a, as a young man coming up through the club as well and obviously on the training pitch. Yeah, because we're in the academy building here and it, it, the, the, the lessons they teach you and, and the coaching you get must be first class. Yeah, it is definitely, definitely. And that's just one example, but there's, there's, there's a lot of examples. Um, and obviously, I think the, another reason is the opportunity is always here at this club. It's just down to the individual if he wants to take it or if he wants to work hard enough to, to take it. Yeah, because we've, um, you got your, your opportunity first under Daniel Farker, but then Dean Smith comes in and it's the same philosophy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think, um, as I said, it's, I think it's just the club's philosophy. Um, like the door is always there for you. It's just literally up to you if you want to if you want to go through it or not. It's been a bit, bit of a season of ups and downs for you, but I wanted to touch touch first on the first half of the season because you made your Premier League debut away at Arsenal. Um, how good of a moment was that for you? Yeah, it was it was crazy. I think that it was in the same couple of weeks as I made my Ireland debut as well. So it was kind of fairy tale stuff. But yeah, I remember. When I see my name on the on the team sheet for the first time, it was a bit surreal. Then obviously you need to calm yourself down and just prepare right mentally for the game. But I enjoyed it, and that's that's the level that I want to be playing that week in week out. So I took it. It was a good experience as well. And how surreal a moment was it when you headed home that goal on your first Premier League start, Carrow Road against Leeds United? Yeah, again, it was another surreal moment. Um, I think it was uh, it was to level the game as well. So um, after I scored, it was just more. Let's get back in shape and go at them again. But looking back now, I probably would have celebrated a bit more. <laughs> um, and you mentioned the international uh, stage as well. You've really progressed there, um, making your debut against Portugal, um, against Cristiano Ronaldo and playing in some of the World Cup qualifiers as well for the Republic of Ireland. Um, you must be quite pleased with how that's going as well. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, on my debut against Portugal, um, like we're playing against world-class players, Ronaldo's, the Jota's. Um, Bernardo Silva's and stuff like that so it just gives you it kind of gives you that insight into what it's like playing at that that literally a peak level because Portugal have players like that so it just gave me it just gave me that taste of playing at that level so and I think after that game was when the fire really lit in my belly that yeah like I want to this is the level that I want to be playing at and I believe I can. Um, with the Premier League and international level every time you step on the pitch do you do you pick up lessons and learn lessons from playing at that high level? Yeah, definitely. Um, especially in my position as well. I'm a centre back, and centre back position positions all about experience. So, obviously, with a club level, I'm playing with Grant Hanley's, Ben Gibson's, um, and then international level, I'm playing with like Shane Duffy, John Egan. So, every time I go away or when I'm here, I always get experience from either training or playing matches. Um, how good is it to learn off the likes of Ben Gibson and Grant Hanley and how helpful are they in terms of training and, and 
in terms of your development? Yeah, it's great. Um, obviously, they've been in the game longer than me and they've experienced the Premier League and the Championship and they've just experienced football as a general. So, um, for me, I'm in their position as well, so I always try to kind of look what they're doing on how they apply themselves in training and how they apply themselves outside the training. And I think that's why it's a big role model for me. Even I remember when I first came into the club, um, looking at the skipper, Grant Hanley. Um, so it doesn't change now that I'm in the first team. Your progress in the first team was curtailed a little bit uh, by the the back injury that you picked up um, after the Tottenham game. Um, how frustrating a moment was that because you, you were getting into the starting eleven reasonably regular, regularly at that time? Yeah, it was it was frustrating. Um, as you said, I felt like I was getting into my rhythm and stuff like that, but, but these things happen in football and it's probably my first real um, kind of setback in my progression. And um, But yeah, th as I said, these things happen and it's just kind of, I've been out like, the last four months, but now I feel like I'm like I really want to come back. I'm itching to come back now, and um, I just can't wait to come back. How is the recovery going, and is there a, a time frame on your, your return? Yeah, it's going well. It's um, with, with the injury, specific injury I have. It's 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 like a slow burner, really. It's just all about time. There's nothing that I can really do to kind of speed it up. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm out the back end of it now, anyways. Excellent. Um, and and just finally, having signed a. a a new contract. Um, what are your aims um, over the next 12 months and what are you looking to improve on? Uh, one of my biggest aims is just to keep developing and um, to try and cement my spot in the starting 11 week in week out because that's, that's what I want to do. I want to be a first team player playing every week. One of the first names on the team sheet. So over the next 12 months and that's what I'm going to really put my focus to.